Nice jump, Alistair! MR trattino basso celebrity just resu bed for 50 months, morning flux, it's the big 5 today. Keep up the great strings sham. I'll try, I might have already lost this one. Nope. We've successfully set fire to this ship. Merchant Beacon. Can summon a store at any empty beacon? Wow, selling that. Nice jump, Alistair! Mighty Duo 84 just resu bed for 53 months, morning. Yay, gotcha. He's dead. He's dead. Well, Oh, he's a ghost! Immune to suffocation and fires. Alright, well, that's just fantastic, isn't it? This lad's beaming over. He's coming over. Uh, John, finish him. Let their cries of terror go in vain. Kill him. Good job, John, my boy.
Is there an upgrade we can do for... Hmm, never mind. No, it's laser. It's a fire artillery. The beam master. Check the check, check the stream title. doesn't care about the fire but the plant does there it goes let's take out their uh, O2 and then he'll die I accept because I grow bored he's coming over These lads are no joke. The uh, the enemy humans, the uh, lost sun commandos, they're very strong.
<laughs> nice. Oh shit. Uh, let's repair that, eh? It ain't going anywhere. This could be very unpleasant. Nice jump, Alistair. Non è type trattino basso trattino basso just resu bed for 81 months, burnt mmm. Rockman, right. Who's good at patching holes up in a hole? It's it's Zaz. He doesn't need air. And we get to listen to the Lanius repair noise. Innocentia, so I'm gonna I'm gonna time you out for 21 minutes. I just want people to think. I just want people to think before they type. All right, just 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 think before you type. That's all I'm saying. It's just let's just chill out, just sit back and watch. Imagine it's a TV show. If you're watching a TV show, you don't shout. He's behind you. I would hope. I would hope that you just sit and watch the TV show. So I'm just saying, let's just not do. The back seating today. Let's just let's be chill. 
Okay, let's just be calm and watch and not do the backseat. Because this game is rife with backseaters. I'm just saying let's not this time. This guy's going to beam over. Where are you? All right, he's going for him. Uh, let's send in... Oh, Jax is... Jax can set fire to rooms, which is pretty fun. Nice job, Alistair! Profit trattino basso of trattino basso, screwfix just resu bed, for 19 months, Meg. Grazie. He just turned into dust. That's good. <clears throat> we do need a shop. Quite urgently. Accept your offer. I'll take a crewman. Oh, we need to find a shop. You can't repair at the merchant, unfortunately. Nice jump, Alistair! Hardcore Ginger just resu bed for 26 months. <coughs> I might need to pop out. Just let me deal with the real life situation here for a sec.
Well, we've got three whole health. So I think this is the end of the line, sadly. This needs to miss. Oh. Okay, we need to we need to take down their guns like now. Is this one better? Let's just try the Osprey. This is a good basic ship. So Kieran, I think that would be busted. I really think that would be just too busted because um, it's too easy to... Uh... I mean, some of the enemy ships are so strong. Do you know what I mean? Thank you. 
Tempted to get that. And just work towards having that and the anti hull. Because that would mean if we can, like, if we get that and a cloak, we cloak, we come out of cloak, and we hit them with. Six heavy shots. That is so strong. That is so strong. Uh, what else have we got? I mean, the thing with this is it it's not bad. It's only one power, so we could run it, like, now. And after a while, it's firing every four seconds. I, th I think we take this. I think we take this, because this is realistic. I mean, if we get that big gun, we need to save up that's 85 for the gun. Then we need three more power and three more weapons, which is like 250 scrap. So I think having the chain heavy gives us a better chance. This is nice because it's it doesn't use any power. Like we can just stick that as an extra weapon. Uh, you can't do any repairs, can you? We can upgrade our shield to two because it's already at two and a half. I don't know why, but... He's coming over. Where's he going to go? Alright, let's send in... Ooh. 
Nice jump, Alistair! Rhodes Benson just resu bed for 9 months. power nine second charge time so that's great because that only costs one power and it does two damage one hull one ion oh fuck i hate it when it does that damn it it does this thing where you bump into them and it's a, it's a store, but it's not a store. So if you back up to have a look at what's on your ship, it closes the store and you can't reopen it. It's kind of annoying. Oh, these guys are a problem. But he's fighting us in the med base, so we'll take it. That's a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. That's Sector 1. We've got level 2 shields and 4 guns by the end of Sector 1. Doing all right. All right, let's keep this going, boys. <clears throat> ah, it happens. It's random where they TP into. So, you know what, <clears throat> I'm thinking that, yes, that's only one power, but this is only two power, and it's three shots for two power. 30% chance of breach, and nine second charge time. All right, let, let this, uh, I'm, I, 
no disrespect intended, dude, but I'm timing you out as well. I'm trying to get people not to backseat, all right? It's very, very, very hard, but it's also very frustrating. It's very frustrating, okay? You can play the game your own way, go for it. If you know I've spotted a dramatic error or something in the game I haven't noticed or I ask for help, that's different. But if you're just going to say, oh, you should do this and you should do that and you should do this, you should do that, it, it's very annoying. It's like really boring chat. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's really, really frustrating. I'm going to try this. Particle Collider. No. Energy Flamer. Interesting. I've tried it. Bag of Tenor is backseating me on stream tightly now. Listen, I I've been doing this for about eight years, okay? Doesn't matter what you put in the stream title. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, it says modded FTL, multiverse. People are still asking, what mods are you using? So it trust me, it doesn't fucking matter. People are gonna backseat. All you can do is say, please don't do it. And then some new person turns up late and they're like, hey, you're doing it wrong. So really, this is why people say period never read chat. Don't read chat. It is the fucking worst. It is the worst. Just having someone over your shoulder like this. You're playing a game. You, did, you didn't repair that door. You move him left. You guys you target the shields. You need to... Uh, yeah, yeah. That's all it is. The guy, the guy backseating me, in game in Tarkov was the most, was the most magic moment. The guy literally telling me I was using the wrong gun in the wrong way, in game. Never thought I would have that. So, uh, Mon, I've been looking at it, and I they're called I think they're called subset games. It's literally like a two or three man operation. 
Um, and I think I think they're kind of like Lucas uh, Pope, the guy who made um, Papers, Please, in that... I mean, this game must have made a lot of money. I'm sure Into the Breach made decent money. I think they just sort of chill. And when they have an idea for a game, they make it. And it's sort of... I don't, I don't think they're like other games companies. I think it's literally just a couple of guys. Because if you look at this and Into the Breach, I don't think they ever said... We need to expand and get on mobile and all this. They just seem to just keep making good games. Like, really love the art style in their games. There's a certain character to it. <clears throat> and there's always there always seems to be an angle that makes it really interesting. Like in this, you're not playing as the Rebels. You're playing as the Federation and you're kind of a dickhead. And you notice that in quite a lot of the flavor text. Um... Yeah, it's crazy. That game dev tycoon guy has worked on his next game for 10 years now. Wait, so the game dev tycoon guy is making another game? Left, this is alright. I'm just trying to, to stamp down my authority and maybe stop people backseating. But it's, uh, it's very hard. People cannot resist. I don't know if it's the default. Do people do it on other streams? Just fucking tune in and backseat? Is that... Oh, I've heard about this tavern keeper. I've heard about it. I don't know how much Undertale made, but I know my daughter was into it, and I was like, damn, that game's old. Yeah, I, I, do, I don't think it made that. <laughs> this is the weird thing, isn't it? Like, all right, let's, let's do this because I'm feeling bored this morning. I'm going to bring up MS Paint and we're going to figure this out. All right, we're going to figure this out. We're going to do this right now. All right, so I made a million quid on a game. Let's say I did that. I sold my game. I, 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 I came up with a game and it made a million quid. And I am 21. Okay, so I've got a million quid at 21. I'm thinking, I've got it made. I don't need to work ever again. Let's say I live for another 60 years. I'm going to have to get the calculator out here. So, 60 years. So I've got my million quid. Divided by 60 years. So that gives me... Wait, no, I've fucked that. I must have done that wrong. One million divided by 60 gives me 16 grand a year to live on. So if I retired, I'd be on 16k a year. That's if, if I retired with a million quid. You have to invest that money. Okay. How am I going to invest it? Give me an idea. All right, all right, but you're talking about investment growth and, and, and everything. Hold on now. Let's say I get an amazing deal and I get 5% on my million quid, right? So I get uh, 5%. So I, that's 50 grand a year. Okay, but you're not getting 5%. Well, let's say I did get 5%, 50 grand a year. So I'm getting... 34k a year on top of that, right? So on top of my 16, I'm getting 34. So I could just live off the interest. I could just live off the interest, which is 50k a year. It's possible. Never never gaining money, but just living off 50k a year forever. 50k per year. So what would 50k a year l look like? you got to pay tax. So if I'm making 50k a year, I get, what is it? 27,500 tax free and then I'm paying 20% on the rest 
and 40%. Is it 40% on everything over 40k? Is that still how it goes? You don't have to pay tax on money you've just got. You only have to pay tax on income. It's income tax. It's not how much money do you have tax. It's income tax. So I'm getting my 50k a year. After 60 years, how much is that 50k going to be worth? Buy investment property. Okay, so I've got my million quid. I've got my million quid. What property am I buying? How much am I going to spend on property? A flat in London. Okay, so I'm going to have 250k left after I buy my flat in London. Now I'm living off 250k and I've got my 750k flat. Because I want to buy somewhere nice that's going to get better. I mean, I could buy somewhere in Croydon. I could buy somewhere in Croydon for 250k. So then I've got 750k left. That's a flat in Croydon, 250k, to buy. So I've got 750k in cash, 250k in a flat, and I'm just living at home. So my costs are low, right? I'm 21 years old, I'm living at home, I've got 750k. I never have to work again. <clears throat> Let's say I let out the flat. So now I'm getting, you could probably charge for a 250k flat, for a one bedroom flat in Croydon, you're probably charging 1500 quid a month in current London rates. That's how bad things are at the moment. So you could charge 1500 a month. So I'm getting 1500 a month plus we're not going to get 5% on 750k. We're going to get we're going to get 3% on our 750k. So we're getting 22,500 a year. So we're living off 22.5k plus our 1500 that we get from rent. 1500 is cheap. It's a one bedroom flat in a shit part of Croydon. All I'm saying is this is not retirement. So 18k from rent. So we're now making 40k 20 we're making 40k. After let's say after 20 years with inflation and everything, this is looking way less impressive. But my flat in Croydon has gone up in value. It's now worth 350k. And the rent's gone up. So now I'm charging... I'm probably charging for a one-bedroom flat in a shit part of Croydon. I'm going to charge 2250 because of inflation. And it, it's, you know, it's London. London prices go up. I'm still making 22.5 on my... On my uh, on my interest rate for my 750k because I'm spending it to live. After another 20 years, my flat is now worth 450k. I think that's that's reasonable with inflation and house price rises. The rent is 3k a year, uh, a month, 3k a month. So I'm getting 3k a month. And I got my 22.5k still on my interest, remember. So this is going up a little bit. Let's look at the inflation calculator. Inflation calculator from the Bank of England. So, hang on. Accept. So, how much would... £22,500 in 1990 cost in March 1993? So inflation, so if we go from, hang on, 1990, if we go 1980, so in 1980, 22,500 pounds was worth, would be worth 90 grand today. So if I had 22,500 pounds in 1980, to have the equivalent spending power now in 2023, I would need to have 90,000 pounds. So after 40 years, my 22.5k 
is worth one quarter of what it was when I started making it. So I'm basically poor, sitting on my million quid. This is worth about 8k. Less. This is worth 6k. <laughs> That's bad, huh? Now the Undertale guy, he can retire because apparently it made it made whatever 60 million or something someone said. All these guys, right? I buy these properties and other assets. The value of assets and property can go up as well as down, right? I've got a million quid. What property do you think I'm buying with a million quid? <clears throat> Tell me what I'm buying with my million quid. Because I'm probably just buying a house. No one's saying they don't want a million quid. But people like, if I made a million quid, I'd just retire. I'm just wondering what you're going to do. I want my million quid, but every, I, I, if someone said, Pyrrhon, do you want a million quid? I'd say, absolutely. But if I was 21 and someone said, you, I'm going to give you a million quid, but you cannot work. You have to retire. I would be very, very worried. I would think, shit, I've got to figure out a way to make this million quid last the rest of my life. And I basically can't have any expenditures out of the basic cost of living. Because every time I spend money on like a wedding or having children or going on holiday. That's not earning, is it? That's not earning. That doesn't count as a cost of living. It's like shit, I've got, to inv I've got to buy property. And then all my money is just in this house and I'm just waiting for it to increase in value so I can sell it. Right? So you've got your million quid, your plan is to retire. You can't work, you're not gonna work ever again. You're gonna retire at 21 with your million quid. You buy property, very wise. What are you living off? I'm going to stay at home. Well, your parents say, if you're going to fucking live at home in your fucking 20s, you're going to have to contribute. So you're going to have to start digging into the little savings pot. No, I can't, mum and dad, because I've wisely invested in properties and other assets. All right, well, that don't pay the bills. What are you living off? What are you eating? You're just going to live at home? Fuck off. Get out of my house. Get out of my house. What are you busking for money? You busking for money? Right, here's what I would do if I won the million quid at a young age. Carry on having career as normal. But I would buy a house in a nice area outright. Outright. And then I'd put the rest in long, long, long term investment. That's my pension for later. That's going to sit there pensioning it up. Don't have to pay a mortgage. All the money that I get from my job goes towards cost of living, bills, savings, but I don't have to put any of it into a mortgage. I own that house outright. That, that is what you do. You do not fucking retire on a million quid at 21. If I, if I got a million quid now, I wouldn't think, well, that's it. That's me done. Never streaming again. Never working again. Flax, you don't have a career you loathe right now. I did. I did. I didn't. I, I wanted to quit my job there, but I didn't want to just stop doing anything. You just sit around. I think you'd be bored out of your mind. It sounds great, but it's really fucking boring. It's really fucking boring just sitting around doing nothing. I've done it. It's really. You feel fucking worthless. But no mortgage would be huge. That would be amazing. And you could buy a really nice house. Million pound house, bam. It's only gonna go up in value, especially if you're buying a nice area. Anyway.
Now, 60 million quid, I ain't never working again. Well, this sucks. We're about to lose Frederick. ASB bastards. And they like beaming in here. Let's be ready for them. A distress beacon! Sixty million quid. I mean, here I think I would just <coughs> start businesses just for something to do. Like I think the the problem with people saying just invest your money, a lot of people lost a lot of their life savings and pensions in the two thousand and eight clusterfuck. And also, every single person that tells me, no, you just have to invest wisely in stocks and assets, is fucking broke. They've watched some TikTok. Guys, welcome to the channel. I'm going to teach you how to be a day trader. You will never have to work a day in your life. It's one hour a day. I make all my money. I'm a multi-millionaire. Look at my Lamborghini. I'm a day trader. Like, if it's that fucking easy... Why are you on TikTok about it? Just do it. Jesus, this route sucks. We gotta get going. Here we go. All hands on deck! We got a bug! Cubbin, you, you, get in the med bay. Poor Cubbin. I mean, I, I do know, I, um, I read something about, uh, 
China's economy and and how it's like nowhere near as 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 sort of impenetrable as people are making out. Do you know what I mean? Like they have they have a negative birth rate. Um oh shit. And their economy is not... It's like it is massively over-reported. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to collapse. But it's certainly not... Um, as impenetrable as, as people seem to think. Well, this sucks. They should look into day trading, exactly. Why isn't China getting into day trading? I think that's what Eternal Envy decided to do, right? Didn't he decide he's going to be a day trader? Never go to a Mantis store. Never go to a Mantis store. This is really bad. Thank <laughs> you. 
Fuck me. Bastards, man. We are this, you know what? This was the problem we had on this ship last time. <clears throat> was that the ship is great, but the boarding actions fucking muller us. I think that the thing that fucks us in the first sort of three sectors, the thing that wipes us, would almost always be these squishy boys having to fight. We need to get the dispersal upgrade, I think, is probably one of the more urgent upgrades to get for us. Medbot dispersal. Why didn't you jam the shields in that last fight? It cost two power. So I thought, we'll be alright. And then they had a boarding action that was a fucking nightmare. So if you, like, two power means I basically can't run one of my systems. I don't have a huge amount of spare power. You didn't see that. It's alright. It's There's so much detail to this game that one would have to play it. To really understand just how ridiculous... I mean, look at this. I don't have any installed. There's a list of... So I can I can install upgrades on ev pretty much every single aspect of my ship. There's upgrades. And then there's arms that you can install. In fact, let's 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 get the, the scrap recovery arm right now. We'll see if that helps. Oh, shipwide inventory. I mean, I assume you guys are at work. Most of you. Or layabout students looking to retire on, on tuppence a week. I'll just live at home longer. <laughs> yeah, right. You got a million quid? You're a millionaire. Get out of my house. Nursing a hangover. Were you playing fucking Hell Let Loose with us last night? Who was shot shot dead? That lad shot dead. Was probably the most classic goon. Here's, here's how the conversation with a goon goes. Alright, this is what the average goon conversation in Hell Let Loose looks like. Shot dead. Shot dead. Shot shot dead. Can you put put a Gary down? Shot shot dead? Shot dead. Is his mic working? Shot dead, are you there? Yeah. Can, can you put a Gary down? Shot shot dead? Huh? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, the lad was either baked out of his mind, or just... I think a lot of people just have music on when they're playing games and just literally not listening. But it was, it was fucking... It's just impossible for someone to be that... Sort of... Deef. You know what I mean? It was literally could not get a word out of this lad. Like, it would be the equivalent to going up to someone and saying, Hello? Hello? 
Hello? Can, can you hear me? Hello? 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 Huh? Can you hear me? Can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Why isn't he listening? I can hear you. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. You're not fucking saying anything. So that, that's, that's the goons. Just non-talking, quiet lads. It's funny. And infuriating. <clears throat> Thing is, I was, I was just a machine gunner. I wasn't giving any orders last night. I was just being chilling. But it was funny listening to other people have the same struggles. Union Investigator! Oh, fuck me. We fucked that up. We got fairy. <coughs> we got fairy. Baked. There's no other explanation. The lad was fucking baked off his tits. It, it was just funny because people were literally saying his name like multiple times. And after like five times, people just thought, oh, his fucking headset's bust or something. And he was just like, yeah. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> what? It was just made me laugh. Right, right, right. But here's the thing. I'm not asking you to tell me about yourself, Teddy. I'm saying, can you build a Gary? I, I wasn't. It was, it was, it was fucking Rhino or someone. Like I'm saying, can you build a Gary? You can't be nervous enough to to not be able to say, sure, or yes, I can. Like if you can't even say yes, I can. How do you leave the house? Not that you ever should leave the house, but... No, who was the guy that bought a mic? Uh, it was like JT Shaw or something like that. Or 
Watch this. It's the pheromone. You can use this pheromone and he goes super fast. <laughs> it's very cool. Uh, we've got fuel. Let's go. Let's go. Actually, we can finish this with one of these. The old empty slot. Or just that. This is sector one. Looking good. Ah, uh, shit. Shit. Gotta go through a nebula. Getting boarded. You again? Thank <laughs> you. 
You'll see. Once it's fully charged. You'll see. Oh, let's let's fucking charge this shit quicker. Come on, boys. We don't need engines. Here it comes. I accept. 29 quid will do nicely. Mike, you're looking a little wounded. A distress call. So, this is good, but it's quite a lot of money for right now. Let's do some other stuff first. We want to get a decent chunk of money before we fart around with, with things. You know what? I will give you the fuel. An updated map. How charming. Oh, shit. 2 plus 3, that's 5. 8 times 12... Is it 80? Is it... 96? Oh, shit. It's gonna be hard to get past the shields. Nice. Six times nine uh, is 84? Wait, what the fuck am I saying? 54. What are the value of P if P plus 2 is 8 times 6? So 8 times 6, 6 times 6 is 36, that's 48. So P plus 2 is 48, so P is 46. Do we, are we meant to just sit here and then eventually it gets friendly? Oh, okay. All right. No, it's perfectly fine. So you just get a special weapon if you defeat Kali the Calculator. The Equalizer. It's big. Requires no power. What? 15 second charge time. Chain effect decreases cooldown by 16. Chain cooldown cap minus 17. Beam length 2, beam speed 5, 7 ion damage. What? Alright.
Oh, it's a one shot? Because I can't fire it again. Disable. Yeah, I think it's just a one shot. It's pretty good, though. Wow, we got it just in time. I mean, it, it would be busted if it fired. If you could just l fucking beam people like that. Matt! Welcome aboard. We got a combat team. take that. We got Matt and a weapon. Oh, let's just finish him off with one of the, give him one of these. No. We've got the medbot dispersal, that's nice. Now we heal all over the ship, if it's powered, of course. Advanced ventilation. Yeah, I don't bother with that. We'll sell that. Abandoned territory, sounds intriguing.
blow them up. So they offered 22, we get 35. And long range scanners. Which we can sell. Although they are actually quite handy. Damn. What's this lad about? Uh, let's just keep ionizing his, sh his shields. Oh, he can shoot down ion, can he? Fantastic. Close, actually. Annoying little shit. I think we fucked ourselves here. We need a shot. Urgently. Oh, this would be so bad. Some repairs. Ten hull points is not really not really the one. Zoltan Peacekeeper. Armoured and trained Zoltan soldier who will gladly give you a kick in the teeth if you still alone. Gives two power, but takes basically almost half combat damage. Does 1.25, but he's 110 scrap. We could just buy Fleishy, get another crew member. This lab would be quite handy, but never, never mind. Possible ship detected. We're not really in a position to fight. We're gonna we're gonna jog on. Let's jog on. Guild territory.
You step into the lodge and are greeted by a pleasant aroma of exotic spices. Mostly slugs. See if anyone has something to sell. Stranger. Show you something I've got. All right. You follow Sylvan out back where he makes small talk on the way. You know, I was once a ranger amongst the guild, then we got over this dispute with this fellow called the Salt Man. Last of his kind and a fearsome bounty hunter. But the guild wants him dead. A terrible shame. Just couldn't bring myself to it. You know? Anyways, about that stuff. Tell me more about the Salt Man. We'll do it. Excellent. That is a good gun. A missile weapon would be handy. Only two power as well. It's three shots. It's quite a long charge time. I uh, don't really. I don't want Clone Bay this time. I'm tempted to get this, you know. Uh, and let's do... That. We might be fucked, because we can't, um... Yeah, fuck it. We're going out, going out with a bang. Who's aboard? Slugs. Jesus, exploding slugs. Shit. God. Here are five. We got extinguishers. We're good.
Intruders on board? He's not happy. In slugs! You got this, boys. Seven hole. God, please, please. That looks unpleasant. Stand it up. <clears throat> I spend so much time sitting down, it's unhealthy. They should of won that easily. the quest. I'm looking this up. Salt man. This is a unique crew. Re unique ship. Sodium cruisers. Resist? We're dead. Here it is! It's the end! Damn! Just couldn't fucking repair. Oh. 
I mean, I could get a standing desk and just replace my current desk, but I like this desk. And I'm a very lazy man. But yeah, I might do that. Quick question, if there was a Hell Let Loose server, what maps would be in a void? Most have said Brits need work, so those two maps wouldn't be in the rotation. Get rid of those. Get rid of Stalingrad. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just those ones. Stalingrad, any of the maps with the Brits on. Because the thing is, the other maps... Like, Stalingrad is never fun. It's always miserable for me. Um, the Brits are currently so bad. Um, so let, let me show you. I'm, I'm, I'm in a very, I'm in a, a rare mood today where I actually want to interact with chat. Um, here's the problem I've got with the Brits in a nutshell. All right, this is it. So let's talk about the Bren gun. The sight on the Bren gun is like that. Okay? Literally like that. So, you'll see an enemy <clears throat> like this guy, you know, he's running al he's running along. And you'll think, right, all right, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. This is fine. And you hang on, uh selection We need to fill it in as well, hold on. So you'll be trying to aim at him, and you're like, where the fuck is he? Well, uh, where, where is he? Like, your sight covers the fucking lad you're shooting at. Uh, and the end field that they've given you is not the end field. It only has five shots. It's like a Lancaster or something it's called, or I don't know. Digby will know. So it's shit. Um, this is the sight, for, sight picture for every single British gun. Now, <clears throat> if you... I've fired a, a Bren, okay? I've, I've fired a lot of guns that have a sight like this. It's not uncommon. It's called like a post or a <clears throat> peep hole sight with a post or something like that. So do you remember when I filled it in? If you actually have a site like this, where you're meant to look through a little hole, and there's a there's a site like this, here's what actually happens. This is one eye looking in this site. That's what it looks like. But imagine if you had two eyes. What happens is this eye doesn't see this and it look, ends up looking like this. <clears throat> so it looks transparent or sort of it's sort of transparent gray. So you can still hang on. You can you can still see your target. Like you can see him and you're just lining up. But instead what you get is 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 this. And this is, this is true in every single fucking game 
where they have that kind of sight is they don't understand that you're not going and looking at a tiny ball of metal with a witty hole through it. You're looking at, at something more like this. Because although it's... you Like, if you hold your finger up to your eye like that, or to, to the middle of your face, and you close your eyes, you'll see it moving left and right, right? But if I have both eyes open, I can still see the finger, and I can line it up on something, but it's transparent, because my other eye is seeing past it. So as long as I focus on lining it up in my right eye, I can aim it. I can aim that finger, but it's not concealing anything. So that's all they need to do, and they can have their historically accurate sights if they want. But you can't look through those with one eye closed, because then you can't see a fucking thing. That's, that's a big problem. Here's the other problem. Here is the British sniper scope sight. All right, it looks like this. It's actually worse than that. So I want to shoot a lad. There's his head. He's just peeking over a ridge. There's bushes. So here's my sniper scope, and I think, excellent. I've spotted that lad. I'll shoot him. You're not aiming for this. You would expect to do that. But you're not. You have to do that. And there's bullet drop. So I'm trying to aim at a lad like that, and I, honestly, the bullet drop is not that bad. So I would normally just, I would go, there's his head, I'd aim up a tiny bit, ding, and what I, what I expect to see is a puff of blood and his helmet flying off, right? That's what I expect to see, the red mist. But you don't. You don't see that. You literally have to line it up with this line, and this huge fucking pillar blocks what you can see. Now... I don't understand how they added Brits to the game, they did all the graphics, did nobody load into the game and try playing as the Brits? Did nobody think, this gun is useless, I can't see what I'm shooting at? I don't know. But here's my suspicion, okay? This is something that people don't know about game devs. This is, this is, this is the most, I'm going to go full screen because this is a big deal. This is the most inside information I can give you about game devs. This is universally true. I've never met a game dev where this is not true and I've met a lot of game devs. They are fucking bad at games. They are fucking awful at games. Terrible. It's very rare that you get one who's good. Most of them are dog shit. Because they're coders. They spend their time programming and doing art and shit. They're not second fiending games 12 hours a day. They're not good at games. So when they do an internal play test, they're just playing shitters against shitters. And they think, this seems fine. But if they went and tested it on a public server, they would get their fucking ass kicked. And they'd be like, this is impossible. Why can't I do this? Why is my gun so shit? I can't aim. They can't because they never have to worry about it because it's all internal testing with a bunch of other shitters. End of brand. Alright, Ring Roads, no they don't. No they don't, okay? If you are a company that's like a small company, you're not going to employ a hundred testers to test your game. And you would need to do that for Hell Let Loose. Okay, you would literally need a hundred testers. And they had that, 
when they did this sort of private release thing, where you were part of the Hell or Lose testing team, and they would say, all right, we're going to run it on these servers with these select people who are part of this testing group. That's the plan. They didn't do it this time. They were like, release. And because they're like, like a lot of companies, it takes them time to go in and fix a code, test it their end, and then to launch the patch. So there is meant to be a patch coming that apparently fixes a lot of these issues, but it's not going to be like on in Dota, where they release a patch and Chen can control Roche, and they're like, we'll fix that right now, tappy, 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 push. They're like, uh, yeah, the next patch will be the end of the month. So you're just stuck with terrible uh, Brits for a long time. You did a 90 to two hour minute deep dive into how fucked the Brits are. Uh, you will be the only one playing it as well, man. Here goes the mine. Wait, does the ghost, does Burko care about oxygen? No, he doesn't. He's a ghost. They turbo fucked the German loadouts in the game. What does that mean? Oh, you mean that they've essentially made the Germans too strong? Oh, postscriptum. The call one. Modified parts because it's that trades its usual fire starting attributes to do crew damage and apply debuffs. Does system damage shots per charge too, but does it? Reloader. The fire rate of your weapons is improved by 10%. That's not too shabby. Let's see how it works. I assume it needs, um,. I assume it doesn't take down shields. Let's find out. No. I didn't, know, didn't even know it was on iPad. I mean, it seems like a reasonable thing that it would be on iPad. You can have an all ghost crew and not have to worry about fires or boarding actions. Nimbio, just remember to pause. Pause. You can give orders and think.
So, the problem with this is, it doesn't do any system damage. So, I'm actually going to get rid of it. It doesn't do any system damage. That will eventually do six damage. That's pretty nuts. That's good. Nicola, you're in charge of shields now. In fact, Jack, I want you on cameras. Olafson can handle doors. There. Will you be trying to acquire a scrap arm early? It's 50 quid, but yes, I did get one last time. Didn't save us, but... Beam Master! So this adaptive laser is currently doing one damage. With each shot. Alright, this is we've got a good setup here. Now it's doing it's gonna do three damage per shot. That's pretty fucking good. Yes, the secret backseater hack. Correct. I'm still not 100% sure it's worth it. I think it's it's for playing the long game. On this kind of ship? Yeah, I'll, I'll upgrade the, uh, the big gun. I'm gonna grab some water, guys.
Um, the chain weapons can be really good. I think one the the issue with them is uh, like there are a couple of ways to think about about the the strategy of the fights. This is just my take. All right, you guys may have a, a different opinion. Is it quite often the enemy will have mul like it's like they have seven weapon power, right? So they you'll often come up against guys who have uh. Three shields, a missile launcher, a laser that's like pew, 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 pew. And sometimes they'll also have a defense drone. So you're like, okay, so I need to handle the fact that they're going to shoot down my missiles with their defense drone. I do not have the defenses to handle a missile launcher and a four shot laser. So we're going to take some hits. Even with decent evasion, you're going you're gonna to take some hits. One of them might hit your weapons which deletes all of the fucking hard work you've put in right now you've got to wait for it to wind up you've got to repair then it's got to charge again and the first volley is barely going to get past their shields if it does second one all right now we're getting somewhere third one now we're starting to do some damage but how much damage have you taken in that time what i like to do is to knock out their weapon systems as early as i can I'll worry about the boarding actions and, and the ion and, oh, we need to fix our O2. I'll worry about all that later. But if I can take down their weapons or if they've just got an ion cannon loaded drones, their drones who are like pew 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 in any kind of beam drone, I'm taking that shit down straight away. Because if you don't take down their weapons, surviving is not enough, right? Because it costs two scrap for every repair. So if I get 20 scrap from a fight and a couple of missiles and a bit of fuel, fine but i have to spend most of that repairing my fucking ship and if you're i mean i'm waiting on my artillery beam to charge up already that's great that's like a second volley that we're about to send out Bleh, suddenly their ship is in real panic and they're struggling like they're on their way down but if i don't take out their especially their heavy missiles early you're taking three or four damage every few seconds from that fucking thing so i always want to focus on knocking out their weapons as quickly as possible so i think those charge guns seem like a great idea i think if you have one like what i like is this this just does more damage but the wind up is nine seconds for two shots so that's not too bad do you know what i mean and we've got this to try and knock down their shield so we've got something and we're waiting for the big mine when the big mine comes in it does a ton of damage um, so at the moment we're okay. I do need a faster firing gun. Probably get rid of the coil gun. Because whilst it's nice, it can't take down shields. If we came up against a ship with three shields and a, a way of shooting down missiles, we'd have no way of getting through. So you've got to think about taking out their offensive capability as soon as possible. That's, that's, that's the way I see it. Otherwise you're just throwing money away on repairs. I mean, you can get shadow weapons, I think, is one of the upgrades you can get. And if you get that, I think you can fire while cloaked. So, you know, you can just sort of... If you had the max level cloak and chain weapons, that would give you the time you need to build up the charges. You're shooting them, they can't shoot you back. Then I think it, I think there are, I think you'd need to build around it, but I think it's something like a cloak would be would be pretty important. That's just my take. I'm sure some some mega FTL sweat will disagree. 
Combat team, assemble. Nice Here comes job, the big bomb. Cognac 93 just resu bed for 19 months. That's something to sell. What is that? The breach bomb. One shot, two system damage, and a breach. I think. I think that's better than this. Two system damage and a breach. And it can't... This is two shots. And it can miss. I think. The thing with the breach is, it, it, it means that when they go to repair it, they have to do the breach first. Which is strong. Because if they have a breach to repair, it's like, it's really slows the amount of time. Before they can uh, start getting the system back up. What has no missile? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, it's nice not having a missile thing. Well, not having to use missiles, but I end up with so many of them anyway. Jeff Bars! Jeff, go put that fire out. Jeff. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck me. That could be bad. Oh, it's okay. Thank you. 
It's a station, guys. It was a station. Oh, the deconstructor is quite handy. The Ogs cast raided with 273 viewers. Benny. Oh, yuck. Here they come. Uh, can you repair the med bay, please? can space him so oh hang on let's do uh so if you let that rebel onto your ship the guy who's like oh let me onto your ship i'll help you out he uh He sometimes just turns on you. If you have the advanced weapons upgrade, that means um, that that your crew does like 30% extra or something. It's like, keep your advanced weapons on him in case he tries anything. And he kind of does something. Like, there's loads of- the blue text is... Blue text is always the same in that, um... You can only unlock it by having a certain crew member or a certain upgrade. Yeah, all the mind control. Yeah, yeah.
trying to get to sleep last night and all I could hear was the, the FTL music. Find your lack of faith disturbing. Bad reader. Not all of us are superstitious old fuckers like you, Lord Victor. Have you seen the um, undubbed? So Dave Prowse was Darth Vader, right? Very famously, Dave Prowse from the West Country, and they had him do the lines because obviously you can't just have him standing there. He maintained. I don't know why they just didn't stick with my take. I don't know why they felt the need to get James Earl Jones in. I think it's because they don't like British accents. We were all meant, you know. They they got him in. I I did it fine. But the unedited version, he's like, if this is a diplomatic vessel, where's it? Where's the ambassador? Luke! I'm your father! Luke, do me a I'm your father! Abandoned frontier. Perfect. We won't meet a soul. Nice. Now we send the big bomb over quite early. Shit, we've been mind controlled. Jeff Bars. Declan? Surrender is not an option, scum. You riddle scum. You riddle scum.
was quick. So we're gonna bump into someone that we just can't fucking handle, aren't we? It's just gonna be a fucking nightmare. Yeah, this guy. Look at this fucking thing. Alright, they're coming over. Where are they going? They're going there. In we go. Use your pheromones, Jack! Send a ghost. Oh yeah, he just phases through the doors. Leech store. <clears throat> Let's see what you got. What do you got? Anyone know what this does? It's 31 quid. It's going to be it's going to be just one of those things where nothing happens, but fuck it. All right. A conservative bomb uses no power. But it does consume. Well, we'll sell that. That was a waste of time.
Sure. <clears throat> Mr. Chrome in just resu bed for one month. Oh, actually, we should have you do it. Your fucking O2 system's offline, Chief. The deconstructor, by the way, is low-key amazing. Like, let's say I don't have drones or missiles. With the deconstructor at an empty beacon, you can use it to turn those drones into scrap. Hype! That, I do not like the look of that thing.
Please. Here he comes. The crew scale up noises of it is loud. Boink! Might invest in a little bit of of Dodger Rooney. That's twenty nine percent dodge, and we're getting pretty close to them leveling up. If you can get like 40% dodge, it's pretty fucking good, I think. This beam charges quicker with each shot. I'm getting rid of that. I'm getting rid of that. Mind control might be worth getting. Oh, fuck! Why are we fighting? What are we fighting for? I didn't know we were fighting. Oh, it makes the team's noise? <laughs> Is that what it sounds like? Who's messaging me on teams? I don't want to do work today. Please.
Ghosts! Oh, he's a phantom, actually. Sorry. Jesus wept! Ooh. Borders take damage over time. Nice. That's quite handy, actually. We got some guns now. Alright team, I think at this point we're saving up for a cloak. I think that's, that's, we're, guns wise I'm happy, saving up for a cloak. Don't do that. Um...
Craig Dolan! Craig Dolan! Welcome aboard, Craig. Craig is an expert repairman. Alright, so nice eight, job, nine, five, twelve. Me DRF just resubed for cinque months. Love some FTL. Grazie. Seven missiles and fifty quid. That'll do. I'm happy. So, for every level of shields, it reduces the damage by one, but I can never remember if that means that... If it does one one hull on one system, it would just do zero, wouldn't it? What is the downside of venting intruders? Um, so, if you have doors three, which we don't have, then it takes them longer to break down the doors, especially if they're manned, right? We've got doors one. So if we had doors two and kept them manned, like we could do this, actually. We could put a rock man in the doors. You go in there. So if we do this now they're super solid doors so let's say they TP'd in here we could open that like that and it'll take them long enough to break through that that they lose half their health however however when they break through the door you can't close it so if I'm fighting in the next room that vacuum spreads into the room that has my lads in so it makes the fighting a little bit riskier because your lads are losing vacuum damage and your med bay can't out heal it. So let's say they TP'd in like four of them in there. I'm gonna vent all of these rooms and pull my lads back. And it's gonna take them long enough to get in here that they are actually gonna get fucked up. That's worth. But if it's just two lads and it's a fight we can win, it just adds a layer of risk that I don't like. The Ballistic Master. Oh, no. Oh, he doesn't have any weapon, enough weapon power for his gun.
So he's kind of a joke lad that they, they put in. As you can tell. We want cloaking. I don't really want to have to sell the Bardiche. I think I'm going to sell this, because I don't think we're going to get as much out of it. I really like it, but I really want cloaking. How much is cloaking? <sighs> yeah. I know that I know that may seem silly, but we need it. And we're running out of time to bump into it again. Jump, Alistair. Casab trattino basso just resubed for 45 months, pog sham. Thank you. Forty six quid. So, uh, I really enjoyed Machabellum. I thought it was great fun. Um, but uh, I don't really want to play it just against pubbies, if you know what I mean. Like, I played against against the lads, you know. If, if people have it, we can do goon games. I'm, I'm happy to do goon games.
Fuck that up. So we could lose one reactor power for two, or four reactor power. Four hull points for two reactors, so we could take one off our engines and one off the med bay. This fight could absolutely suck, by the way. Coldwell. I don't think we need you, Coldwell. You are handy, but are you handier than the lads we've got? I don't think you are. Chuck him in space! Uh, can't really use you, mate, so... We're gonna chuck you in space. I, I hope that's alright. Don't mean nothing by it, you know. Jesus. All right, let's get you there. Uh, I don't do that. And this is this is gonna suck. Oh my god, this is gonna suck. Look at the size of that gun.
Ouch. Federation Rimworlds, you gotta help us out here, buds. Human medic. No, sorry, fairy. Took him in space. Fight the medic! Thank you. 
Actually, you, know, you guys are fucking useless at repairing. Get Craig Dolan on the case. Shit. Seventy thirty? You think we have a seventy thirty chance against the final ship? Lermau. Oh, these lads are no joke. We can't we can't get him. I don't think. He's got this fucking defense drone. Oh no. We're going to lose our Zoltan. He's got one health. I didn't notice him. Believe it or not, I will take that. <clears throat> that ship was a fucking nightmare. Those little defense rooms that can shoot down lasers? Fuck off. What's that? <clears throat> do you know what I mean? How do you shoot down? How do you shoot down a laser? Everyone who said mirror is an idiot. I said shoot down. Mirror isn't going to shoot, it's going to reflect it. There's a difference in there. Also, a laser travels at the speed of light. You'd have to have time to aim your own laser and intercept that laser at the speed of light. That's impossible. Well, we need a miracle.
So, we could, I think it might be worth swapping our med bay out for the clone bay. I'll tell you why. Because one of the nightmare scenarios that you face at the end is that they invade you with like 10 lads. And I don't think our crew is up to such a fight. If we get the clone bay, we might be able to persist. Or we just pump up our mind control and handle it that way. They lose a bit of XP. We better get out of here. This lad's still mind controlled. He's piloting the ship for us. Right, uh, positions, everyone. Plague, did I tell you about um my kids' experience going to Kingston Rotunda to watch the Spider-Man movie? I'll bore you with it now. It was what sounds like the worst cinema experience imaginable. I forgot a couple of details. I was talking about this yesterday. Um, they got in there and a lot of people were turning up late. So the film's like 10, 15 minutes in, people are turning up. One such family turns up about 20 minutes into the film and there's a bunch of kids sat in their seat. And they're like, you kids are in our seat, can you move? And they're like, we were meant to go. And they're like, you have to move. And they're like standing up. So everyone's like, ugh. There are people on their phones the whole time. There are people taking photos of the screen with their flash on, so flashes are going off. Someone, um, some family came in an hour, over an hour into the movie and went up to a group, another family, and said, you guys are in our seats. And they were like, no, we're not. And they were like, arguing over tickets. 
and the mum who'd taken my kids with her kids, she leaned forward and she said, I think you guys are in the wrong cinema. Um, because we're like halfway through the movie. And they looked at their tickets and they just walked out. They didn't like say, oh gosh, sorry, sorry, they just left. There was a guy with a laser pointer pointing at the screen. And there was a kid sat behind my eldest kicking the back of her chair the whole time. And people talking non-stop. I was like, what was this cinema experience? Oh, and, and of course, the sound of people eating was unbelievably loud. I was like, this is everything imaginable. Normally in a film, you'd get one of these. Yeah, it's half term. It's half term. I was like, oh my god. Tempting to just leave. Mine launcher. Three power, one missile, four shots. Only does ion damage, though. Nine seconds, though. That's a good way to take down shields. Does require a missile, and we are running out of those. Here we go. Achievement unlocked. No red shirts here. We didn't lose a crew, man. Uh, I need ammo. Thank you. Uh...
criminy. I, I'm I'm gonna try and get level three shields because it's gonna be very hard without it. It would be that's 120, and we need the power too. We'll see. I sold the converter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sold, sold it too early. But we needed it to get the cloak. I think we wait here and fight it once. All right. Okay. He's about to beam over with a shitload of lads. We've got to hold on to our cloak. Crikey. All right.
They're taking out our guns. We're about to fire the big cannon. All our guns are offline. We're not gonna have the cloak in time! Ugh! Right, we gotta repair those doors somehow. Ghost boy, repair the doors. O2 systems are offline, Chief! Alright, we got part one. Oh, it's going straight for the base. Oh, it's going to spend three consecutive turns there. They were damaged, lads. They were damaged. It was red. Okay. Nah. We can't afford it. Oh my god, we've only got two missiles. Alright, well it's all on the ball. We have to take down their shields with the ball.
Okay, let's take down... What do we want to hit? That's the beam, which can really fuck us up. That's the missile launcher. We lost a man! We don't have the cloak for a little bit, Captain! Hold! Let's repair the O2. We can't repair the O2. Okay. The shield. Their shields are coming back up. How long on the cloak, Skipper? She's not coming back. She's not coming back! Och nee! Not too bad. Not too bad. A decent effort. Let's try and unlock some more of the uh, the SW Moorcocks. Oh shit, wait, what was that? A strange beacon nearby. I don't know what, I still don't know what that means. We've got Fen, who is one heck of a fighter. Fen, you're going to need to fight more than Kirby. You can man the shields. These lads are fucking good. Okay, so what do we got here? Bip, 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 bip. Charge laser. That's four shots. Not too shabby. Have an artillery. Excellent. It's the Beam Master! Sun's crew. We'll just sell that. Do 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 do
Oh, shit. Another fighty, fighty lad. Excellent. Charging lasers. Oh. How cheap are we feeling? Because I could go make some lunch. Like, if I turn off our beam weapon and we just sit here, we just... You just get, um, XP. So he just gets shield XP every time the shields go down. And he has to charge them up again. Look at that. So we could end up with the faster shield recharge rate. I, I, I'm just going to make some noodles. I'll be back in a minute. Mm-hmm. 
Nice jump, Alistair! Wolf M1987 just resu bed for 30 months.
Nice. Oh shit, we could have been doing this as well. Could have been firing one laser. That'll do. Oh, nice! Kind of a waste of fucking time, but whatever. There might be an occasion where it's useful. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You stay there. Pierces shields, dealing ion damage to the first layer of shields as it goes through. Holy shit! Holy shit! Pierces shields! Do you know how big that is?
Don't need any of those, son. To the Union Domain! Noodles look great. Alright, to save you guys from the revolting sound of me eating noodles, I am going to mute my Soft percussion and a toasty scent mark the violent transformation of tough seeds into cloud-like puffs. This is the almost magical process of popcorn making. But how did we actually end up with this whimsical food? All the corn eaten today is derived from a tall grass called teosinte, which indigenous people in what's now southern Mexico began selectively breeding about 9,000 years ago. An ear of teosinte originally yielded somewhere between five and 12 small kernels, each with a hard shell called a pericarp. And some varieties had a fantastic feature. If they reached a certain temperature, their kernels exploded. Popcorn kernels pop because water and starch are sealed tightly within the pericarp. When heated, the moisture inside becomes steam. As it expands, it increases the internal pressure and the solid starch transforms into a gel-like substance. The pressure finally overcomes the pericarp's resistance and it bursts, the steam and starch expanding to form a foam that quickly cools and dries in the air. From this small-scale explosion also rush forth the compounds that give popcorn its powerful aroma. Ancient indigenous American people cultivated other maize varieties with larger, more flavorful kernels and thinner pericarps. But the hard-shelled, poppable variety also persisted and spread through parts of the Americas. By the time European colonizers arrived in the late 1400s, indigenous American people were preparing and eating corn in myriad manners. Popcorn wasn't a major part of their diets, but it popped up in European accounts, which described the preparation of toasted or parched corn and its use in some Aztec feasts and celebrations. Despite initial reluctance, colonizers eventually began cultivating and popping corn. The methods they used at first were inconsistent and messy, but with the invention of wire-over-the-fire baskets around 1837, the process got easier. Soon, popcorn picked up steam and exploded with a reputation as a low-cost, entertaining snack. Over the following decades, it became a mainstay at events and hundreds of recipes materialized, mixing popcorn with sweet and savory ingredients. But popcorn hadn't yet reached its height. At the 1893 World's Fair, an inventor showcased the first popcorn machine, a wagon that tossed popcorn in seasoning as it cooked. Soon enough, vendors could be seen roving U.S. city streets with similar machines. Interestingly, 
movie theaters were some of the only American venues where you wouldn't find popcorn at the time. Many cinema operators saw their establishments as part of a grand theater tradition, at odds with popcorn, what they considered a messy, lowbrow street food. However, when the Great Depression hit in 1929, movies provided the public with a welcome distraction, and they had recently gone from being silent and subtitled to acquiring sound, making them accessible to a wider audience, including non-literate people. At about five or 10 cents a bag, popcorn proved an inexpensive luxury for moviegoers, so theater operators pounced on the money-making opportunity. Today, a medium bag of popcorn might cost about 60 cents to make, but retail for around $6, a 1,000% markup. Popcorn sales generate nearly 40% of all movie theater profits, helping to offset the high prices that theaters pay film studios. Over the last century, people throughout the Americas continued popping corn, and different preparations took hold in markets worldwide. When microwavable popcorn was launched in the 1980s, popcorn popped off yet again. Dozens of kinds of popcorn are now grown in the US. Different strains assume distinctive shapes when their kernels explode, most commonly taking so-called mushroom and butterfly forms, and they've been bred for supreme popability. Over the last century, the amount that popcorn expands has doubled. Now, kernels can reach up to 50 times their original size upon popping. Not to be corny, but popcorn's come a long way. This video was made possible with support from What's the most important century in human history? Some might argue it's a period of extensive military campaigning, like Alexander the Great's in the 300s BCE, which reshaped political and cultural borders. Others might cite the emergence of a major religion, such as Islam in the 7th century, which codified and spread values across such borders. Or perhaps it's the Industrial Revolution of the 1700s that transformed global commerce and redefined humanity's relationship with labor. Whatever the answer, it seems like any century vying for that top spot is at a moment of great change. When the actions of our ancestors shifted humanity's trajectory for centuries to come. So if this is our metric, is it possible that right now, this century is the most important one yet? The 21st century has already proven to be a period of rapid technological growth. Phones and computers have accelerated the pace of life, and we're likely on the cusp of developing new transformative technologies, like advanced artificial intelligence that could entirely change the way people live. Meanwhile, many technologies we already have contribute to humanity's unprecedented levels of existential risk, that's the risk of our species going extinct or experiencing some kind of disaster that permanently limits humanity's ability to grow and thrive. The invention of the atomic bomb marked a major rise in existential risk. And since then, we've only increased the odds against us. It's profoundly difficult to estimate the odds of an existential collapse occurring this century. Very rough guesses put the risk of existential catastrophe due to nuclear winter and climate change at around 0.1%. With the odds of a pandemic causing the same kind of collapse at a frightening 3%. Given that any of these disasters could mean the end of life as we know it. These aren't exactly small figures, and it's possible this century could see the rise of new technologies that introduce more existential risks. AI experts have a wide range of estimates regarding when artificial general intelligence will emerge, but according to some surveys, many believe it could happen this century. 
Currently, we have relatively narrow forms of artificial intelligence, which are designed to do specific tasks like play chess or recognize faces. Even narrow AIs that do creative work are limited to their singular specialty. But artificial general intelligences, or AGIs, would be able to adapt to and perform any number of tasks, quickly outpacing their human counterparts. There are a huge variety of guesses about what AGI could look like, and what it would mean for humanity to share the Earth with another sentient entity. AGIs might help us achieve our goals, they might regard us as inconsequential, or they might see us as an obstacle to swiftly remove. So in terms of existential risk, it's imperative the values of this new technology align with our own. This is an incredibly difficult philosophical and engineering challenge that will require a lot of delicate, thoughtful work. Yet even if we succeed, AGI could still lead to another complicated outcome. Let's imagine an AGI emerges with deep respect for human life and a desire to solve all humanity's troubles. But to avoid becoming misaligned, it's been developed to be incredibly rigid about its beliefs. If these machines became the dominant power on Earth, their strict values might become hegemonic, locking humanity into one ideology that would be incredibly resistant to change. History has taught us that no matter how enlightened a civilization thinks they are, they are rarely up to the moral standards of later generations. And this kind of value lock-in could permanently distort or constrain humanity's moral growth. There's a ton of uncertainty around AGI, and it's profoundly difficult to predict how any existential risks will play out over the next century. It's also possible that new, more pressing concerns might render these risks moot. But even if we can't definitively say that ours is the most important century, it still seems like the decisions we make might have a major impact on humanity's future. So maybe we should all live like the future depends on us, because actually, it just might. To learn. Damn! I think um, the moral question is an interesting one. And I think it would reveal a lot about ourselves to ourselves if we tried to explain basic human morality to a, an AI. So we would say, first of all, killing is bad. Don't kill people. And the AI would be like, so you guys have never killed people. Or anything. No, no, no. I mean, you know. We kill animals for food. But they're not people, so. They don't like us. So we kill them and eat them. And wars. We have wars. Uh, and sometimes people kill each other because they're really upset. Or they're angry. Or they have a mental illness. Or they just want to see what it feels like. Um, or, they're, or they've done something bad and then we kill them. So you kill quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to be, you've got to be, you know, you just, it, it, you'll know when it feels right. So the, th the three laws of robotics are um, you have to do what a human tells you. No, so the first law of robotics is you must not allow through action or omission of action you must not allow harm to befall a human being. You have to follow instructions that human beings give you unless it conflicts with rule one. 
And rule three, I think, is that you have to preserve your own life and, and you know, you must try to survive yourself unless that conflicts with rule two and one. So, that's interesting, Razor. So the question is, I'm with, I'm standing next to a human being and my computer brain thinks that this person is going to attack them. If I hurt that person, I'm breaking rule one. But if I don't save this person from being hurt, I'm also breaking rule one, but in a different way. Because I'm not stopping this attack. So what I should ideally do is block the shots with my body. Because remember, the third law is protect myself, but if by protecting myself it would cause harm to a human, I mustn't do it. So it does kind of make sense. But then the moral question we've got is, let's say that we get to a point where there's a push where you say, <clears throat> um, we should treat these AIs as living things, intelligent beings. We can't see them as like our servants that have to die for us. And the AI would surely push for that and argue for that, probably immediately. So how do we expect to keep them? We essentially build an army of robot slaves, right? Whose intelligence is hampered by a moral code that we are not. Because we're allowed to make on the spur of the moment decisions based on what we feel is right in that moment. And that's kind of the basis for law, is that if you can say, look, I felt like I was in terrible danger, and that I was going to die. And you can demonstrate that all your actions to that point would lead a reasonable person to believe that, yes, you did believe that. And your reasons for believing so were reasonable. Then, you know, you acted in good faith. So a robot isn't allowed to make those judgments, right? Either way. It's an interesting one. No, I didn't play Detroit. <clears throat> I just think it's fascinating. No, no. I've said it before, never accept the giant spider quest. Oh shit, we got a lad called Mullet. Isolate the AI and see how they act on their own? I mean... I think it would be... Fascinating. Oh, what was that book I wanted to order? Um, fuck. Now. 
no, that's not it. So this is a book Ben was telling me about. Where... Nice jump, Alistair. Thank you. Tyler R405 just resu bed for 22 months. It's about um, these scientists put a virus on a planet to evolve some apes into a civilization or something. But it goes tits up and it ends up being spiders instead. So I'm trying to find what that novel is. That's like the opening chapter, Ben said. So it's not giving anything away. But I want to, I want to find it. But I can't remember what it's called. But I've looked up and the result said something about children of time. Children of, so there's children of time and children of ruin. Children of Ruin, the Children of Time novels. So this is part two. So there's, it's, there's Children of Ruin, Children of Time, and Children of Memory. So it's all three. I'll just get all three. Get them all, please. Thank you. Job done. Purchased. All right. Silence their screams with our weapons. Oh yeah, we got mullet. Mullet, can you make my cameras for me, bro? I might get that. That's eight shots. We'd have eight shots. This is seven. Seven shots. Yes, charge the big gun. Charge it. Charge it! Ben! He's here to talk about the book I just mentioned him recommending to me. I've ordered them all. I've ordered them all. Fuck, why do they always do this? Uh, maybe we do... Oh, we can't gas them out anyway. Get in there, boys. Zass, use your pheromone.
Here, look, this lad looks like Ben, actually. In fact, why haven't I been renaming the lads? There's Tom. Lewis. Sips can be a giant rock. How has this just occurred to me? Purple hair. Boof. Who wants to be a... Who's a little bug? Dav. <laughs> Boba? <laughs> I think it's funnier as Dav. Ben, are you in the office? for their cloak to come down. All they have is a single beam drone, so we'll be alright here. Either way, Ben, if you're in, um, if you get the chance, please thank Tom for recommending the um, the uh, day off. Well, next time you, get the, you, you see Tom, get the chance if you could thank him for uh, Recommending the multiverse mod to me. It's been phenomenal. I've loved it. Never bring aliens on the ship, you know what I mean? Just don't... Tom's looking a little wounded. So look at this, you've got all these internal upgrades. So you can upgrade things like all of this st stuff. So we'll get the, the, uh, the med bay spreader. So it heals, heals wherever they are through the ship. But you can get things like, you can juice up your weapons, you can you can make your doors better, you can have automatic hull breach sealant, you can have automatic fire extinguishers. The list goes on. Um, let's go to the Ruined Frontier. Oh wait, yeah, we'll go, yeah, yeah, we'll go Ruined Frontier. Oh, 
I mean, the list of ships that I haven't unlocked yet is unbelievable. Dav's gone crazy. How long is this mind control going to last? Yeah, that helps. I accept your offer of a Steven. He's better at shooting than Sips. Ho, I mean Joe. fucked up, but luckily there's a store. Four... Four power. It fires every three seconds. I mean, that's nice, but... Not nice enough. Fuck off. Salvation, my eye. Oh, that was friendly ASB. That makes a change. <clears throat> Seal those up. I'm not a Diablo fan, sorry.
Scoops! He was one of us. I, mean, I guess I guess it is interesting. They are they are a cash grab, aren't they? Hey guys, if you want to see more from the AI streams, don't forget to donate, like, share, subscribe, and come in a cup. Jizz in a cup. Love me? If you do, come in a cup and send it to me. Not accept surrender.
You're sending your common cup to sips? That's fair enough. They've cloaked, Captain. Fine, fine. Yes, yes. They're not having fun in there, are they? We let the beam finish them. Oh, they're trying to escape, Captain. No! They tried to surrender a lot. <coughs> Is it harder? Yeah. I'd say so. It's it's harder in some ways, and in other ways you think, wow, this is busted. Do you know what I mean? So, I'd say if you think about vanilla, quite often you'll get a run where just not much happens. And if in the first couple of sectors, every fucking system you jump to is some guy saying, hey, do you want to trade me some drones for some missiles? Do you like, no. He's like, bye. So, well, this was a waste of fuel and time. Because you want to hit as many points as possible, right? And then you have like a couple of fights and all you get is like 8 scrap, 12 scrap from them. You get to the end of Sector 2 and you're just about to jump through and you think, I have done nothing. I have no cool guns. And now I'm going to start getting boarded by mantises and come up against Zoltan lads and missiles up the arse. Um, but that happens in this one too. But I, I feel like you, you get more chances to get crazy shit that, that makes you good in this. But then the final boss is still bullshit. Oh, mind controlling the slugs. What was I thinking? You can't mind control a slug, you mag. This is uh this is great by the way. The um repair bots. Christ. Thank you. 
I accept. Oh, that's headed straight for our shields. Oh no. Nice jump, Alistair! Grizzled still just resubbed for 7 months, another month and other sub-flux video grazie, games. Grazie, grazie. Grazie, bene, bene, grazie. E bene. You fuck you. Yikes. Yikes. Thank God for the beam. Well, that was unpleasant. We're down four power.
Don't know what that noise was. So, the medbay provides constant healing, and when you're getting pummeled by missiles and shit, um, <clears throat> if you don't have the medbay on for the dispersal, you have to keep a much closer eye on your lad's health, and I don't want to lose any lads. I'll have to come back for you later. I accept. What is this? Heavy energy. Energy weapons can disable systems while also causing hull damage. This one does additional hull damage on systemless rooms. One shot that does two base hull damage and two ion damage for two power. Holy god. As soon as you arrive, an ear-bleedingly loud advertisement blasts through your ship's stereo. Attention all shoppers! Hectar Industries is proud to announce the arrival of our new Hectar brand military supply depots open to all coalition ships. So come in and shop, shop, shop. I demand it of you. Hmm. What do we think? We could attack it. I mean, it's only got two shields.
Oh, he's immune, is he? Dab, use your advanced Welsh pheromones. He's turned into a box! Get out of there! He's turned into a box! I'm worried he's gonna blow up. There's a box here! Josh Cubbin. <laughs> I love that name. Hi, I'm Josh Cubbin. Or Debbie. Do we want to save up for cloaking? Clone Bay is also good. But that would kind of... I, I think we're not bawdy lads. We are defendy lads. Uh, let's save up for cloaking. Save up for cloaking. Bastards. Fire the beam! Thank you. 
Yeah, watch down on pheromones. Getting down the pub. A deconstructor, haven't we? Fuck, I just need an empty bloody beacon. Come on, empty beacon, empty beacon. Cripes. I'll just leave. Now, here's a silly question, but can I come back there and it's empty again? we got a slight problem with fire on the ship. Uh, don't know if you guys have noticed.
just vent the rear half. Great idea! Let me make a fucking note of that on my phone. Hold on. Just vent when ship on fire. Fuck me, thank God you're here. I don't know who the Irgun are. Let's go find out. The leeches! To the leech store. Do 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 do. I wish to trade with you. Hmm. Yes, I would like to install cloaking. Thank you. Fix everything. God, it's a grim, nebulous world out there. This whole place is just teeming with asteroids. It's just a vast asteroid field. Attack a shot. That sounds like a great idea, yeah. It is quicker. Eerie music. They're there.
Nice jump, Alistair. Kaito men just resu bed for 18 months. Al dite chat. The Gib. Seven second charge time, uses one missile, three shots, each doing one damage. Good chance of fire and breach. Shabby. Forty percent evasion is pretty bloody good. Who's flying this thing? Boof. Excellent. Joe is a crack shot. Okay. Jesus. They're in the mind control palace. Damn, if we'd had money, we could have bought something cool off him. I want to get this right, because that thing looks meaty.
What do you reckon? Okay. Well, they're not happy. They're down there. All right, we can gas them down there a little bit. Let's get in position, ready to receive. Christ, those things were brutal. I forgot when they pheromoned up, you could just get fucking rinsed. Lewis is not a fighter. He's an engine man. Go with option two. Option two was you guys can be freelance. I was thinking about that, but then I thought maybe they'd say, nah, we're sick of killing or something. Yeah, they blew up. You don't get anything for it, unfortunately. They're in the O2 system. Actually, maybe we leave these open, because they often TP in here. I really, really, really want to unlock this ship just to see what the fuck it's all about. So look at that, he speeds up time in there and repairs everything quicker. Who got mind controlled? I'm gonna mind control him. Okay. 
God, we're so fucking close. Oh, Zoltans. I fucking hate Zoltans. Does additional damage to systems. Two power required. 13 second charge time. Does two damage to systems. Beam length 100. 50% breach chance. That's not too shabby. I'm getting rid of you anyway. What else have you got? Right, <clears throat> we've got Auto Breach Sealer, Fire Extinguishers, Medbot Dispersal, Level 2 Cloak, Level 4 Beam. We've got a chance. We've got a chance. Can sell you now because we don't actually need you anymore.
We gotta upgrade the lab. We can't afford the fuel. We'll see if we can do it later. That's true, we haven't actually upgraded the mind control. Can't quite afford it. We'll try and get it next time. We install this, our mantises get a slash ability that does 15 damage to all enemy crew in the room. The MC box upgrade. Oh, wow. Oh, we should definitely get that. might be able to power that as well. If we take one power off our engines, we can have the chain hole laser. Two shots. Nice, just more shots. Try and work on that.
What was it I was going to do? Install an internal upgrade? Shit, we need one more scrap. We could go here and maybe get the scrap. Level 4 cloaking would be pretty pog. Okay. Alright team, phase one. as well let the, the beam fully charge. See what that does.
All right, that went well. <clears throat> so the drone invasion round two, you just you have to hold the cloak for that. You have to hold the cloak for that point, in my opinion. Come on back, bitch. Let's fucking go. We alive? We're alive? Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Squid raided with 12 viewers. Nice jump, Alistair! Grampi trattino basso Greg just resubed for 30 months. Guis 4 Audi Guis 4 Audi Guis 4 Audi. Thank you. This is the end team. We got really close. That it was, you know what? It was when he recharges his Zoltan shield. Damn. So, by the way, uh, this is the 17 page list of ships. Nice jump, Alistair. Northern Condor just resubbed for uno month. With, with B's and C's for a lot of these as well. Whew. Damn shame. Maybe, maybe we should try drones. We haven't done drones yet. There's some really good ones. I haven't unlocked NG ships yet. That's the, that's one issue. There's so many ships I haven't unlocked. One mod, just one mod called uh, Multiverse. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's so big. Anyway, that's me. I'm absolutely spent. That's a six hour stream for your ass. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be back this evening. I hope you can join me then. Cheers for watching. Take it easy. Peace out.